In today's tutorial, I'm sharing my simple three-step process for painting more detailed leaves in watercolor. This is something you can totally do, so let's get started. Hi friends, welcome back. My name is Shada and today we are doing one of my favorite things and that is painting leaves. So I'll be using cold pressed watercolor paper, 140 pound. Um, I'm going to use my Mungyo 48 pan watercolor set, comes in this great little tin. And then I have two glasses of clean water, a little bit of paper towel for blotting. And for brushes, I have a number of really good quality sable hair brushes uh, that I love and I'll sort of experiment with these. The first two are a number two and a three, so fairly small. They have a large belly to hold lots of paint, and then the pointed round comes to a nice fine point. Now, this one here is just a round brush, but this one on the right, let me get it wet so you can see the difference between the round and the pointed round. The pointed round comes to that nice, beautiful fine point, and with animal hair, it keeps and holds a very, very fine point, which is amazing to paint with. And if you want more information about paintbrushes, you might want to check out my watercolor e-course because I get a little more in depth there. So I'm going to start today by mixing up some paint and here's how I like to do it. I like to use a wet brush to scrub the uh, surface of the pan. So I pick up a lot of paint, lay it down onto the palette and then add some more water. So you never want to mix your paint on your page. You want to mix on the palette and get it nice and watery. And again, the watercolor e-course that I have out is a great resource for mixing colors and mixing paints, all that stuff that we don't always get into here. So now that we are all ready to go, as the video title says, this is three steps to uh, better, more detailed leaves. And step one is to simply paint the leaves. And I do that. If you're a fan of the channel, you know my formula for step one. You're going to use these uh, round brushes and use the belly of the brush and drag it across the page to make this random leaf shape. And then you can use the tip of the brush to refine the leaf. Let's do another one close up. Use that belly of the brush and drag it across the page. Maybe wiggle it a little and then use the tip of the brush to refine and change the shape of the leaf if you need to. If you want to add a bit more of a point on one end or a bit more pigment, that's when that de delicate tip comes in. So drag that belly of the brush across the page and then you can always make little changes using the tip of the brush. And you can see me working here just laying down a bunch of different leaves. I'm trying my best to make some of them thin, some of them are a little thicker, some are on an angle so it looks like half a leaf. That's one that I'm doing right now. It's uh, it's sort of like a folded leaf almost. Instead of being an oval, it's kind of half an oval. And I'm just doing a whole bunch, a couple clusters of these random leaves. All of them are a little bit different. All of them are very perfectly imperfect. And I'm also thinking about using different colors. I'm using some very warm greens today and what I've done here is mixed a lot of brown into my green um, to the point uh, where some of the leaves I would say are pretty much almost brown and I think that adds a really natural element that I really like. One last thing that you're going to think about when you are doing step one, which is just to paint a bunch of leaves, is to overlap some of them. It just gives a really nice, natural, organic look to the leaves when you're all done to have some of them tucked in behind. Okay, step one, paint the leaves, is done. Now step two is to add a bit of shading to those leaves. So what I'm going to do is mix up some darker green, uh, and I'm mixing in um, kind of a darker, more evergreen color. I'm also mixing in a bit of a blue-gray and a bit of brown. You could mix in a bit of purple. You just wanna darken up your green a bit, but you still want a very loose, watery paint. So don't get too dark or too thick. And then I'm going to come back over here and this is step two now that our leaves are painted and they've dried at this point as well. We are going to add some shading and I get pretty relaxed with this. I'm not 
thinking overly hard about where the light is coming from, although you can consider that. You can choose a light source. You're the artist. It's up to you. Um, but what I'm doing here is just kind of, I'll paint in one side of each leaf a little darker. I might do each end of the leaf a bit dark or just one end a little darker. So I'm just adding some random shadow to make the leaves look as though they are curving and crinkling. You know, they're these natural shapes. They would be um, sort of folding and falling this way and that. And in that way, um, parts would be darker and parts of the leaves would be lighter. So we're just adding that darkness to our leaves. And then uh, this is kind of an in-between step. We are going to join all the leaves with some stems. And what I like to do is just simply uh, do it in pencil first so you know where you're going to place the stem. And then if you need one or two more leaves at this point because you think it would make the composition look nicer, you can paint that in. And then either use a dark green or a brown and just uh, join all of these leaves with a few branches and stems. I like to kind of wiggle the brush a little bit or shake it so that the branch is very uh, perfectly imperfect and doesn't look too stiff or too straight. But we're just going to join everything up and uh, then we will move on to step three. Step three, like step two, begins with making sure you have a nice dark, rich green. You can mix in a little gray, a little navy blue, a little brown. You just want a very dark green. And then our final step is to add this veining on the leaves. And you wanna make sure that your shading is dry, but watercolors tend to dry very quickly. And what I'm doing is I'm choosing a midpoint for each leaf and I do that line down the middle. And then I'm doing these very broken, very perfectly imperfect curving lines going off in each direction. And uh, the number two, the smaller pointed round brush is wonderful for this because the pointed round brush has that big belly so it holds lots of paint so you don't have to constantly go back to the palette and the paint just flows beautifully through that delicate tip, that fine point. And you can see that my lines, I let them break a little, I let them get a little thicker in some spots. And for these half leaves, I'm just doing um, just the lines on one side. There's no center point. So think about doing some leaves that are sort of coming down and out towards your viewer. Some of them are on an angle. Some of the leaves are just a half. Some are just like a tiny little sliver. And in that way, they look like they're going off in every which direction. And it gives this wonderful natural look, which you want when you're painting botanicals. Okay, so those are our three steps. Uh, we did our leaves, we shaded them, we did the veining, and now if you wanna add just a little extra shading, if there's anywhere you think needs a touch more, you can do that. But this is the formula. I think it works uh, wonderfully. Um, when you're finished, you might add just a few smaller leaves without the detail, again, to give that natural, really free, organic look, but that is it. Three steps to, to more detailed leaves. You don't always need detail with watercolor, but when you do want that, uh, this is how I get there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And if you are learning watercolor and you want more content, be sure to check out my watercolor e-course. It's available on my website, shadacampbell.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.